Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome to another episode in this skew T and Hodograph series. Up to this point, we've talked pretty extensively about this side of the sounding diagram. Now we're going to move on and take a look at this side of the diagram, which is, of course, the Hodograph. Um, if you haven't checked out the uh, previous videos in the series on skew T's, I would highly recommend doing so. I'll put the links to all those in the description below. But toward the end of the series, we're going to be doing some kind of wrap-up videos, um, taking what we've talked about in the series and applying it to some real-world forecasting scenarios. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't. Um, but now we're going to move into talking about the hodograph. Now, what is the hodograph? Well, it's basically a visual representation of the wind shear in the atmosphere. And we know that wind shear is the changing of wind speed and direction with height. So um, if you have you know 10 knots of wind at the surface and then a kilometer above that you have let's say you know 50 knots of wind that's wind shear that is speed shear you know if it's coming out of a different direction say the wind at the, the surface is 10 knots out of the south uh, and the wind at a kilometer above that is let's say 50 knots out of the southwest you have both speed and directional wind shear in that case so the hodograph is a really uh, easy way to help visualize the wind profile and the shear profile in the atmosphere it's a much simpler diagram than the skew t it doesn't have all those different lines to follow um, and it basically just takes into account the wind direction and the wind speed now some quick sort of you know, basic review before we go into actually constructing a hodograph from some raw data like we did with the skew T. We talk about winds um, which can be uh, represented as vectors. So a vector is basically a representation of the magnitude and direction of a quantity. So if we have, you know, a 10 knot wind f from the west that would, the vector for that would look like that. If we have a 50 knot wind from the west, the vector would be much longer, showing the increase in magnitude there. And we, al we always talk about wind in the direction that it's coming from, not the direction that it's going to. So whenever we say we have, let's say a southerly wind, we're saying that that wind is coming from the south to the north. We don't call that a northerly wind because the wind is going toward the north. We call that a southerly wind because it is coming from the south. Let's say we had a northwesterly wind. Well, that would be coming from the northwest toward the southeast. It would be a northwesterly wind. So keep those things in mind as we talk about the hodograph here coming up. So let's take a look at some raw data here. We're going to look do exactly what we did with the skew T's and looking at raw data and trying to construct a hodograph from the raw data. Now, we've talked about all these variables before in a previous video toward the early portion of the series. To create a hodograph, we're, just, we're going to be focusing on these two columns right here. So we briefly touched on these in, in that video previously, but these two columns are the data regarding the wind. So this one on the left, is wind direction in degrees. So wind is given, um, if we're doing it in raw data form, it's given in degrees. So if we create a grid here. We're going to say that if when the wind is at zero degrees, it's coming from the due north. So this would be zero degrees. It's coming from the due north. And we go around clockwise, so this would be 90 degrees, and an easterly wind, so coming from the east would be a 90 degree wind. Coming from the due south would be 180 degrees, and then coming from the due west would be 270 degrees. And then finally, if we have back to our due northerly wind, we can call that 0 degrees or 360 degrees. So that is how we denote wind direction in degrees. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we look at how to plot this actual hodograph. The column here on the right is the wind speed in knots. So it's measured in knots, not miles per hour. 
pretty simple. This is the magnitude and this is the direction. So let's say, talking about vectors, we'll take this wind here at the surface, which is 190 degrees at six knots. So 190 degrees at six knots. So this would be coming at 190 degrees, so just to the left, just to the west of due south. So we would draw it from the origin going up this way, six knots. And we'll talk about how to denote and how to um, properly denote the speed of each wind vector when we're when we plot the hodograph here but it would look something like this it's coming from the southwest from the south southwest just west of due south at 190 degrees so we draw it from the origin going up from the southwest toward the northeast at 190 degrees at six knots and we'll talk about again how to denote the speed the magnitude in just a sec so we're going to focus on these two columns here, wind direction and wind speed. Of course, we're going to, we're going to keep the um, pressure level in mind as we go through this exercise. So let's go ahead and plot a sounding, or plot this hodograph here. So this is going to be a different hodograph than what we, than from, from this raw data, different raw data than what we did in, I believe, video two, when we constructed the skew t from that raw data. This is a different set of raw data. Same concepts here, though. So I'm only going to plot um, a few points here. Obviously, the programs that plot these hodographs are going to plot every single point. But in the interest of time, I'm going to kind of just plot a few different points and show you just the gist of how the hodograph is made. So we have our raw data here on the left and our blank hodograph on the right. Now you might be thinking, this looks like a lot different than a normal graph, definitely different than the skew t's we've been looking at in the past few videos. And that is because the hodograph is given in polar coordinates. So when you see a normal graph, it is given in usually xy coordinates. It has an x-axis and a y-axis. So if you're measuring, you know, say distance versus time, it's in Cartesian coordinates. You have an x-axis and a y-axis. But wind is not given in x-y coordinates. Wind is given in, it's a vector quantity given, it has a magnitude, which is the wind speed, and a direction. And the wind speed is referred to as r. That's our magnitude. And our direction is going to be referred to by the variable theta, which is basically just the angle of the wind or the direction that the wind is coming from. So the coordinates, the polar coordinates are r theta. So when we're looking at this graph, this hodograph is in polar coordinates. So each spoke, so each of these lines kind of emanating from the origin is a different theta. So each of these is a different theta or different angle, different wind direction. So it starts at the top at zero degrees, 90, 180, 270, back to zero, or 360. And each of these rings here is representative of our R coordinate, or our wind speed. Now, when you're making your own hodograph, you can kind of pick your interval here between the rings. I like to do 10. For this example, I'm gonna do 10. So each ring increases by 10, so 10 knots, 20 knots, 30 knots, 40 knots, and so on. And then you get an interval of about 10 degrees between each spoke here, or each theta. So that is how you plot the, that is the basis for the hodograph diagram. So let's get started and plot some of these wind vectors. So I'm gonna scroll this down a little bit. And of course, so we have our zero degrees up here, zero slash 360, just to keep this kind of in in the back of our minds, this is going to be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. So let's start at the surface here. So the, our surface here would be at 983 millibars, about 173 meters off, uh, off the ground. So we start with our speed. It's going to be 6 knots at 190 degrees. So our first point here is 6 knots at 190 degrees. So we're going to find 190 degrees. So of course, due, due southerly is going to be 180. So this spoke here would be 190. So we start at the origin, and we follow that upward 6 knots. So of course, we know that this first ring is 10 knots. 
So we're going to go up just over halfway from the origin, between the origin and this first ring, kind of on that 190 degree line, and we're going to plot our wind vector. So I'm going to do different colors here, kind of alternate, so we know what we're talking about. So I'm not going to do every single point here. Of course, the sounding programs that plot the soundings from the raw data are going to plot every single point in the atmosphere. I'm just going to do a few different points here to kind of get, get you the gist of how to do this. So let's do this one here at 935 millibars, about 600 meters off the ground. Wind direction is 195 degrees, 35 knots. So again, we find 195 degrees. It's going to be between this spoke and this spoke here. So about right in there. And we're going to go up 35 knots. So this one will be 10, 20, 30, 35. So there's our endpoint for our vector. And we just simply draw our vector. Now, in a general you know, sense, when you are making the hodographs, you would be using a protractor using a straight edge so that so that you get the most accurate hodograph possible. Here, I'm just going to kind of freehand it, but you kind of get the idea. So let's go up to, let's go to 873 millibars here, which is just over a kilometer above ground level. So this wind vector here, speed 44 knots, 210 degrees. So we find 210 degrees. This is 190, 200, 210. So 210 at 44 knots. So we go up along this um, spoke here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 44. So our endpoint of our vector is going to be there. And then we just draw the vector from the origin back. So let's do the next one in green here. Let's go to, let's do this one here at about 811 millibars. So 49 knots, 225 degrees. So 225, again, this is 190, 200, 210, 220, 230. So right in between there, right in between those two. And then we go out what is going to be 49 knots. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So just short of the 50 line there. And we draw our vector from the origin back. So I'll do another one in green here. Let's go, let's do 751 here. 230, 230 degrees, 54 knots. So we find 230. So this was 225. So this one would be 230. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 60. So kind of right in the middle there. back to the origin. I'm going to change colors here back to blue. Let's do, let's go 700 millibars here. 225 degrees at 63 knots. So we've already found the 225 degree one here, but now it's 63 knots. So five, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 63 would be somewhere in there. You draw from the origin along that 225 degree. Let's do a couple more here. Let's go, let's do, I'm just going to skip a few in the interest of time and space here on this diagram. So 500 millibars would be 230 degrees at 80 knots. So we've already found 230 here. So again, we're going to go five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So very strong winds here at 500 millibars. We draw our vector once again. And then let's do let's do one more here. Let's go to 400 240 degrees, 84 knots. So this is 230, 240 would be over here. We already know that this is 80, so it would be actually just a little bit off the diagram here. And we draw our vectors. So we've drawn all our all of our wind vectors here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the tips of the vectors. And that is going to make our hodograph. So we'll start here. 
and we're going to go up connecting to the tip of the next vector. We go from the tip of that vector to the subsequent vector there and then just do that and keep doing that until we have our photograph. Then we went back here a little bit and then that is how you make a photograph. So we made our photograph here. A little bit messy here because it's you know a little bit hard to draw you know these kind of overlapping vectors but if we go to our actual photograph you can see we did a pretty good job there it kind of starts off increases in size then kind of goes back toward the north here as our wind vectors were a little bit more southerly here in the mid levels a couple a few kilometers up then it goes back toward the east a little bit so we did a pretty good job with our photograph and this is the actual photograph for that raw data that we plotted. And we can find a lot of different quantities from this photograph. We can find wind shear between different levels. We can find you know, stuff called, you know, called storm relative helicity, uh, storm motion, etc. And we'll talk about how to find all of those parameters in the next video. So that's all I've got for now. That's kind of the basics of how a photograph works, how you can create a photograph from raw data. Again, in the next video, we'll talk about how to, how to kind of estimate different quantities such as storm relative helicity, um, wind shear between two different layers, uh, etc. So thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.